Okay, awesome. Thanks a lot again for inviting me. So let's uh, directly jump into the topic why we need automation. And in order to explain the why, oh no, first of all, of course, the agenda not to miss because it's some content we are going to uh, share with you. First of all, need for automation. This is where we are going to start. And then I have created a dedicated point of view on automation. Why uh, Mulesoft is entering the automation space. Uh, uh, you know that automation is not a new topic. This has been around for a while. There are so many solutions in the market, but still why Mulesoft now is entering this topic. So I will uh, emphasize on it in a point of view um, why it's needed. And then we will go into the introduction of the Mulesoft automation suite, uh, introducing the different components, how they interact with, with each other, also um, being more technical on the architecture side. And um, then we will have a demo marathon. Basically, I've prepared a couple of demos. I think it's around six. So hopefully we can cover it. And it's all about you know giving you an idea where automation can be used. So you will be seeing few use cases already in the demo. And then we will discuss the use cases uh, which we have uh, here prepared as well. And um, the wrap up will be just next step where you can find additional information. Uh, I will share a few trail heads with you and uh, question and answers as well as uh, the trivia quiz, which we are going to do today in Kahoot. So let's uh, get started with the why. And to explain the why, I use this um, average company lifespan, uh, which is uh, for the Fortune 500. And here you see the uh, last 60, 70 years, uh, where you can clearly see that in the past, the average lifespan was much, much higher uh, than which is uh, in uh, which is today. And there were also in the past, you know, it decreased uh, because of economical events which were happening and then increased again and decreased again. But in the last 10 to 15 years, it majorly decreased because of the digital transformation which is happening and the digital uh, disruption uh, which is uh, bringing in emerging technologies and um, the organization and the business do not have uh, enough free co capacity to invest in uh, innovation. So they are overloaded with work and uh, they cannot invest in innovation and every company is impacted. So it's today in this digital era, it's not about anymore. You are a big company or a small company. It doesn't matter what size of your company, uh, what company you are. If you cannot bring the right innovation to your business, to the market, you will be disrupted. So there's no line in between. Either you will be disrupted or you will disrupt the market. And of course, we want you to be on the disruptor side. Um, and um, But therefore, being on the disruptor side, you need to free up your creative mind in your organization to invest in innovation. And one of the key elements to free up the resources is using automation. Yeah? But also here, it's not like it's in it's being invented uh, today no it's uh, it has been there for the last 20 30 years in some form automation has always been there and in the last few years uh, 10 years i think rpa has become super uh, super relevant and uh, also uh, hyped uh, a lot uh, but still there is a unreturned uh, unrealized uh, uh, promise on automation. Um, and these are just few numbers from the connectivity benchmark report uh, from 2022, where organizations say why automation in their um, organization is failing. So 70% say it's because of the missing connected user experience. And so apps are not integrated well, uh, say um, also 28% of apps are not integrated well, the, the organizations say, and also 60% uh, because of the connectivity data and app integration. So it's mainly on the on the integrativity of uh, the architecture of the apps which are being used on day-to-day -day business. Uh, that's what is causing the automation uh, to become more stable and sustainable. And it's also not uh, be able to uh, scale. And here I want to give you a quick uh, outline where automation actually is coming from. So I would like to tell you a story on the automation itself, how the whole hype around RPA has started. Yeah? So let's imagine we are an organization. So what are the roots of automation? We have a process uh, maybe implemented with different technology. 
We have another process which is also implemented with different technology. And then there might be a requirement to interconnect these two processes with each other. Of course, system integration would solve this seamlessly, but many, many organizations, they don't have the skill set, they don't have the people to invest in system integration. So what they usually do is they have someone who understands the process, they work on daily basis with these processes and different applications. So they use this persona who is mainly from the business side. And this person is then doing the interconnectivity between the processes where this person goes into SAP, opens the SAP application really from the UI, grabs, for instance, the order information, copy it out, open Salesforce and paste it into the Salesforce opportunity and to really bring the interconnectivity between Salesforce and um, SAP. And it is valid for any other uh, kind of um, application where you need to uh, connect or interconnect data uh, between systems and processes. So over time, of course, you can see it's a person, it's a human, and a human in today's digital society, in today's digital era, is of course, it's slow, right? So you need to be fast today to really survive in the digital era. It's error prone because it's he, this person is just a human like we are. So it could be that it makes mistakes, a human error. It's repetitive and tedious tasks. So often this person is uh, a highly profession uh, from business uh, who is doing this tedious task, which is a high cost process, of course. So over the time, uh, the organization said, okay, let's, let's get rid of this human, manual, repetitive, tedious work and uh, reduce the cost here. So what they do is they have replicated or they have replaced this activity is what the human or the person was doing with a bot. And so now the person could more concentrate in their business and the bot was actually doing one-to-one -one what the human was doing before, like opening the SAP screen, copying order data, opening Salesforce, pasting the order data into the opportunity and link the processes with each other. So RPA became something like a process and helped really uh, automating repetitive work. So now let's understand how it happens. How does RPA work? So if you have this process, which you want to automate, which you want to interconnect with other processes, so you will have a set of activities a human would be doing on repetitive uh, manner. And these should be defined in a pattern which is replicatable. Yeah? So you would see, okay, there is a process, always the same task. So in order to automate it, you still need business because business knows exactly they are doing it on a daily basis, how this process is working, what are the applications which are open. So you need business and an additional resource. Now we are talking about UI automation. So our RPA developer is required. Just in terms of UI, UI stands for user interface or also GUI is graphical user interface. And therefore you need to have a RPA developer who is able to automate on a user interface. So the business will share their knowledge, what the process looks like, what are the manual uh, tasks they are performing on repetitive basis. Then the RPA developer will say, okay, I will, do it in a one-to-one -one manner, I will automate these tasks using a script, a bot, a no-code solution, whatever. I will automate it in the same manner like you do. And of course, this needs to be tested before you deploy it into production because at the end of the day, this automated bot will run in your production environment and will work with your production data. So you need to test it out in order to make it stable and uh, repetitive. So now, once you put the process into production, everything is fine. Two weeks after the process is in production, the SAP team comes up and say, let's deploy a new transport into the order SD module, uh, sales and distribution module. They deploy the new transport, so this process is not working anymore. So what will happen is the automated process will fail. The RPA developer will get the uh, error, but you know he cannot relate because the process has changed and it is impacting now the UI. So what will happen is he has to contact the business to really understand why this uh, error is happening. And then together they will sit and uh, fix it 
So business will tell actually what need to be done in order to fix uh, the issue and uh, really make it more um, updated and then redeploy the automated process again. And that's not everything. Then the automated process has been broken here, right? So it's in production. So business need to invest now one uh, effort in the manual execution. So they need to really understand where it failed and then continue it uh, manually um, to make the process uh, complete. So once this is done, then everything is set. But this is happening in today's world. Think about DevOps, think about agile projects, CICD, where we are changing things on hourly basis, on minutes, um, uh, UIs are changed, new requirements comes up, uh, you add new fields to your processes, you make, uh, you change the layout and so on. So that's what makes RPA in today's society cumbersome. Yeah? And let's summarize what we have just seen. And I, after this, I will just pause for a second to ask in the um, round if there are any questions. So what the investment today in RPA driven automation looks like is like you have this cost effort to time graph where you see, okay, my business people are investing kind of effort into repetitive work and I want to automate it. So at some point you decide as a business team or persona or even an organization to introduce RPA based automation. So what will happen is, first of all, you need to hire RPA skills. UI automation, which is done through RPA, user interface automation, needs a specific and dedicated um, skill set. Even you have low code or no code solutions, you need to understand how automation works. So you need to have a RPA developer here. And additionally, you need to plan that this RPA executing processes, which need to run on a bot. And this bot is deployed on a, uh, on a client, to involve IT, maybe security. Uh, you have to maybe also take care about the licenses the uh, bot will use because now the bot will use UI licenses, which will be uh, logging into SAP, into Salesforce, and many other applications you want to automate using UI. Yeah? So, and after this, the whole uh, effort here from business won't go down directly. It will take some time. So, first of all, you hire this RPA developer or you have this RPA developer in place. So business need to educate what are the processes they want to automate because RPA developer, they understand the technology, they understand what automation looks like, but they don't have a clue how automation or what are the processes which need to be automated. So business invest some time here and then maybe they see some relief uh, in terms of reduction of effort but as we are living in a super agile environment, super uh, digital era, business will need to continuously support for all the failing scenarios which are happening to complete uh, the failing scenarios, help the RPA and automation team to scale automation. Uh, because once automation fails, because UI has changed, uh, you will need business uh, to be on it and help fixing these issues. So what I see here is this is what I refer back as cumbersome RPA. RPA, which has been brought in, you have invested your time and effort into it, but it's not working. Yeah. So if you compare it, if you continued your manual effort, um, I think you are investing now even more uh, cost into the automation initiative. So you have shifted the effort from repetitive work into serving automation. And the moment you start serving automation, your automation journey has failed completely. And this is currently the um, market uh, state. So I refer always to this mantra, automation should be serving humans and not the other way around. And how it happened, this is what we will see now, why Mulesoft has entered the market. Um, but here I want to pause for a second just to clarify that we all are on the same page. You got what I wanted to uh, share here. Um, is, are there any questions? Ashish, over to you. No, I mean, we are good. I don't see any questions. Yeah, guys, please, uh, you know, post your questions in the chat section. Okay, so let's then see how can we solve this problem? How can we make automation appealing more to the people and persona who needs it? Because currently it's like business needs automation, but they are not owning it. So RPA 
developers, automation teams, they are owning it. So whenever business need to change something, there's this communication towards the automation team. And they have a high backlog already, right? So business is always not um, having the ownership and therefore you have this communication overflow, which is also causing a lot of um, damage into the automation initiative. So let's see how we can solve it. First of all, let's understand the sphere of automation. What's the spectrum of automation? You are all MuleSoft experts, so you know about that automation cannot be done only on UI, right? So there is this spectrum where you have interfaces like APIs, more technical, of course, and you have UI, which are more uh, related to business uh, personas. And on both sides, you have people who can do it. So on uh, UI level, you have the better understanding for business people because they use these applications on day-to-day -day basis. And they work with SAP, they work with ServiceNow, with Salesforce and so on. Their day-to-day -day work is based upon these application. And on the other hand, you have technical people, developers, integration architect who understands the uh, who understands the technology, the interfaces, the APIs, and so on, um, but they are not interested in automation. They are, they, you know, they can do automation. They can help you, but they are not interested in. This persona is the the one who is interested in automation, but currently it's like they can only relate to UI. So if we can make it happen to enable this persona to work also with APIs, maybe in a decoupled fashion then we will make the breakthrough um, and provide the right uh, persona delivering uh, automation and ownership. So, and there is a reason why we should be looking into the API side as well, because RPA currently is only focusing on UI automation, which of course is easy to understand because you work with these application on daily basis. But on the other hand, it's slower in execution time. Of course, it might be faster than the human, but it's still, it is slower in execution time. Imagine our order to cash scenario in SAP, where you open the VA01, create sales order, go to delivery creation, uh, check delivery, change the, um, uh, change the type of delivery, whatever, and then continue with the invoicing. Um, it takes some time to execute it. And as it is uh, executing on a UI, UI need to be loaded, data can be uh, loaded as well. So this is something which is eating the execution time. Also, UIs are available later in the life cycle. Yeah? Um, they require client-side installation. So you have also additional operative cost and effort which are related to UI automation. All this is causing today the automation initiatives and the RPA projects to fail because UI automation change or UI itself it changes more frequently than APIs. On the other hand, you have APIs yeah, with MuleSoft technology. You all know it with the connectors and so on. It is much, much faster to create UI automation. Um, so 10 times faster, these are numbers which I have seen really in my environment, um, 30 times faster in execution, right? So this is a benefit which I would say this is a huge benefit. So if I can get something 30 times faster than UI automation, then I'm nearly real, real time. While as in UI automation, you have to wait for a, a specific uh, period of time. And also one thing which is super important, the very first thing which is built as part of a project are APIs. If you build a new app, the first thing you build is APIs. The first thing you mock are APIs. So think about it in an agile environment, already mocking the APIs and thinking to integrate it into your automation, not only into integration, but also into automation scenarios, this can become super powerful and help you to become a hyper automation company. Also API runs everywhere. They don't need a bot or dedicated Windows machine to execute something on a UI. They can run in a cloud, they can run uh, on-premise, they can run everywhere where you want it. So having this, knowing this and understanding this let's see how automation can be perceived and it's an api first approach so let's always when you think about automation i know there's a big hype around rpa especially also now in the mules of community but if you want to really make automation successful start with the headless automation what does it mean headless automation 
So it's an API first automation approach. We will also uh, talk about what are the tools behind the colors. But let's see, we are focusing on the purple and the blue one where we say, okay, for every modern application, what is a modern application? Any mobile application you have, any responsive web design application you have, for any modern application, try to identify, is this system uh, accessible through the APIs? Are the APIs documented and available? And if they are documented, I think you, ha you have an understanding uh, also on how to use it. So their API should be used. From the very beginning, web, modern applications go with API automation. For complex system, we were talking about it, SAP, order to cache uh, process, you don't want to do this with UI automation. If it is possible to do it with API, with headless automation, maybe using the MuleSoft uh, SAP connector, then go with it. Yeah, it's much, much faster, and there's a huge benefit in order to uh, scalable and st stability of the automation. Same for NetSuite, yeah, go with API automation. For databases, where you have here SQL, no SQL, you don't want to automate these kind of things with UI, where you open a SQL client and try to enter the SQL statement, go with headless, with connector, with APIs or interfaces, because on SQL, you don't have any APIs, but it's a headless interface where you can make sure you create an API using the interface which exists, and then you can interact with the backend system. FTP, SFTP, go always with these kind of things with API first automation approach. Once you start with the API first automation approach, keep in mind also who needs automation. How can we make sure that the person who needs automation really owns the automation? From these three uh, roles or personas, we know RPA developer is a, a, a UI automation expert, but they don't need it. They can do it for you, but they don't need it. IT team can provide you access to systems, but they don't need automation. They can help you doing automation business or users who have their day-to-day -day work overloaded with repetitive tasks, they need automation. And they are in this slide declared as business. So business need automation. This is something we need to understand. So this persona need to have the ownership. How can we give them the ownership on automation? Understand what are the apps and um, systems they are working on. Salesforce, SAP, NetSuite, does APIs exist? Does connectivity exist to these systems? What does it mean? Connectivity is always headless. Does it exist? And if yes, then you go with the center for enablement uh, process. This is the more important than ever. I, I would even say in the automation area, this is even more important than in the integration space because with the center for enablement, you are already bringing in the content from the integration space where you tend to share API as reusable assets. So you can use this center for enablement, also apply it to automation, and then first start with implementing automation. The very first tool, and this is the center of automation, is the point and click automation. These personas, they don't have any know-how on how to uh, uh, transform a JSON to XML. They don't care. They just need to get the, their day-to-day -day job done so you can use Muse of Composer to just allow point and click automation through the out of the box connectors provided by Muse of Composer. Once this is done, there might be in the automation requirement. Sometimes they have to upload data to a specific uh, FTP or write data into databases or any other application which is not accessible uh, from Composer, like FTP in our case. Here you would say, okay, API first. We are still in the API first. Um, let's bring in our AnyPoint platform. The most modern and powerful platform for API-led integration as well as automation, where you can unlock basically any backend system. And this is what you will do. For this FTP requirement, FTP step, something which is able to upload the data to that specific interface, via API built on top of any point. And this can be securely shared from the IT team uh, to the business. And business can then use this and decompose it in Composer. So they, will don't, they don't see the technical information. They just see the relevant information they have to use in terms of automation. 
But now let's see there is another thing. Now they need to interact with the application which does not provide any interface. There's no API available. How would you go for it? And again, this is an API first scenario where the last mile in the automation is RPA. So now you can focus on the UI automation. So any system which cannot be unlocked through APIs, through any headless interface, you would go with UI automation. So these it could be unstructured data, images, PDFs, files, system without interface, legacy environment, client server applications. And sometimes you will find web application which has so really complex APIs created or where you don't uh, have this, um, all the functionality implemented through APIs, then you would go with UI automation and use RPA for it. So this is the last mile of automation which you should be using. Of course, for us, this is something new. Then so, that's why everyone is excited, but how can they, the business now solve this? So they would ask the RPA or automation team to build and unlock the system uh, old mainframe application with UI based automation and share it within Composer. And now you have given the ownership back to the persona. So if they need to just change something on uh, on data side, you know, they can do it on their self. For these kind of small changes, they don't need to go to IT or automation team. They can do it on their self. If of course there is something they need to unlock a new system, MongoDB, Oracle, of course, then they need to communicate. But the rest, the communication overflow is brought to a minimum here where it is always needed, right? And this is the typical process. Automation is always a team sport including the production team, yep, team who is creating the content, who is creating the asset to be automated and enabling and empowering business and every user in the organization to consume it and build their own automation processes. Here, I want to pause for a second, Ashish, just to see if there are any questions, um, unclarity, anything we can talk about. Um, there is a question in the chat. Uh, so anyone has any question, please uh, do raise your questions. So anyone want to talk or uh, let me know. I can give you a mic also. Okay. So there's no question, so we can continue? Yes, sure. Okay, so let's come back to this initial graph, which we have seen, um, where we um, talked about the cost and time and effort. So same I will do now with the universal automation approach. So over time, you identify your business is investing in repetitive work and tasks you want to automate. So you now introduce automation as a universal automation approach with the API first mindset. And what you need to do is, of course, we, we have minimized the RPA skills, right? Because we have declared RPA specific scenarios where in a DevOps environment, where in an agile environment, it makes sense because these application which you automate are not changing so often. Therefore, you need less uh, resources in bots as well. And you have these additional things which you can reuse from IT, API assets, which has been built from any point you can reuse now. So what is it, uh, what is happening now? So you will, it will not directly go down again you know it's there's no way it will go down first of all business need to understand how i automate how do i build my automation it's something a process which they need to in and adapt and understand okay this is how i make my relief in repetitive work so once they understand using automation owning automation they can continue to build automation, reuse assets which are created through the automation team and by IT. And they then they will see the benefit because you will bring it continuously down. You, they are using Composer now and are owning everything. So they are not always in the communication with the automation team. And now if you compare it with the manual effort, you know, we see this on our customer side that they can start at some point, there is a break even where you start saving time and cost. And there are a lot of um, customers who have shared these experiences with us. So with MuleSoft approach, the way we compose it, the way we position it, I personally believe this is the right way where automation journeys will be successful 
and also this whole whole automation dilemma which you will see in the market when you do a bit of research where everyone is talking about rpa and wondering why 50 percent of rpa projects are failing this is the reason because business is not owning the automation with composer we are bringing it back to the business and with uh, the api first approaches you are not reserving any kind of long uh, working long running task on different operating system this is not needed only dedicated scenarios where rpa is used and of course this brings the benefit to musoft automation in terms of efficiency productivity and it's something you know where everyone can use everyone who has a need for automation they of course need to enable their self. This is where the peak was, uh, their self to composer. But then it is a working progress which will bring the cost reduction and resiliency over time to scale automation to the complete uh, enterprise by empowering everyone in your organization. With this, we will come now to the introduction of MuleSoft Automation. What does it contain? Again, I want to pause here for a second. Just you know, just want to check if there is something. If not, we can uh, seamlessly continue. Uh, we are good, Danny. We can go ahead. Okay. So let's see what's part of this MuleSoft automation package. So MuleSoft automation is focusing, as we have seen in the in the uh, point of view, moving faster with fewer resources. We want to enable the whole organization to get rid of all repetitive, tedious, manual tasks uh, by providing different capabilities. You know, even these capabilities are enabled through tools, but these capabilities allow any organization, any user, any employee to contribute towards automation. And this makes it super powerful, improve the whole customer 360 experience. And not only customer 360, I would say this is for any consumer 360 experience. It could be an employee, a partner, a customer. By using these capabilities, you can scale automation and make a collaborative approach and effort to start your successful automation journey. And this is what makes MuleSoft unique. How do we do it? Of course, our go-to tool is MuleSoft Composer. This is the tool where you instantly can hand to anyone who understands their business application with point and click automation. They can connect to apps and get data instantly, build their own flows in a really no-code environment and seamlessly integrate, reuse things which has already been built by any point or RPA team and make the automation journey successful. So this is really where you start pro, uh, consuming what has been built within the organization. Then I'm following the API first approach. Yeah? So that's why any point comes now for me here. Uh, you may see a different presentation where RPA would be before, but here I've tried to keep the API first automation approach. Now with any point, if you find systems and APIs which are not available in Composer, which cannot be unlocked, the next uh, capability is to see can any point make it and any point in most of the cases will be able to unlock these systems to allow it securely expose system and uh, access to business people to uh, start the automation to use the automation and really um, build upon a secured environment uh, which is resilient and monitored through and governed by it and the last mile to automation, of course, if the first the first API API first automation approach does not find the interface, you, you always have the last mile, which you can unlock any UI, any system, any document or image with MuleSoft RPA. It has super uh, strong uh, capabilities in terms of recognizing objects by capturing images in different um, in using different approaches in a secured platform going through the whole life cycle of a ui automation sharing and collaborating together with the right people adding also manual interaction between bot and human and scaling the up end-to-end -end automation together with composer any point in a 360 experience this is what MuleSoft rpa can do for you and it makes it even more stronger if it's part of the automation portfolio 
So now let's take a look what are the different components. So if you say this is the whole suite, as we are now in the Mulesoft meetup, I will, uh, the, the translation of this slide is built for Mulesoft, uh, for Mulesoft uh, engineers. So if you know Mulesoft, so you know exactly these are the tools which you use. So basically the Mule application is built upon the design studio, which is any point studio where you can use different kind of connectors to build your mule flows, mule apps, APIs, and so on. You have a mule runtime. This could be everywhere where you deploy your mule apps, and then you have this exchange portal. And of course, the other different capabilities and features from the AnyPoint platform are also there. But I am really focusing in this automation uh, point of view. Uh, where you have exchange to publish everything you build. So the way it goes is you build something, you deploy it into the AnyPoint runtime, and then it is uh, deployed and you can consume it. The next thing what we have is the RPA uh, solution, which includes, of course, the RPA manager, where you design your processes, you evaluate your processes, you run and deploy your processes. You have here a robot farm, very similar to the Mule runtime, but this is the RPA bot farm where you have installed the runtime, so the bots, the RPA bots, ready for you to execute any UI related process. Yeah? This is always a Windows application, can be deployed basically everywhere, but you need to make sure that it's a Windows operating system. Same goes for the designing part. If you want to design an RPA process, you need to have the recorder just to yeah, prototype it and then continue the RPA builder to bring the meat on the bones for the automation for the UI operation by connecting different systems. And the way you will have also on the same side uh, in the automation suite, you have Composer, which of course has its management console completely in the cloud. And also the whole uh, design is working in the cloud. So you don't have a I which you download and then uh, work upon it. So you can use a web uh, interface embedded in the browser to design your automation. So now, how are these two processes or these two tools working with each other? First of all, when you build automation using RPA Builder, you have to save it in the server because you design, evaluate, deploy processes here. So the moment you have saved it, it is on the server. And from the server, you say deploy to, um, to the bot farm. Yeah? In any point, you can, of course, use the CI CD or directly deploy. It's up to you the way you have to do. But here you have to follow a life cycle, which is mainly managed in the on the server side where you deploy the automated processes to a bot farm, and then the bot farm will be running these processes. Additionally, same you can do for the uh, composer flow where you deploy them into an embedded runtime in Mules of Composer, and then they are there. Also, you can use the direct integration between RPA and Composer to build or call RPA processes, yeah, which will be called via HTTP, and then here they will run on the RPA platform. So this is this is really something which is super integrated here. Um, is there a question? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that is a question from. Does R does Microsoft RPA requires programming skills, or it is purely tool based? It's purely no code. Yeah, so while as with any point you have no uh, low code, RPA is completely no code. And we will see it in one of the demos where we are going to build the automated process together. Yeah. Does it answer the question? Yes. And one more question, like RPA recorder or RPA builders or ID? Um, RPA Builder is uh, a IDE. You can compare it with Studio, but it's a completely no code uh, application. RPA Recorder, I would not say it's an IDE. It's a program running on Windows, which allows you to capture all the screen, uh, screen behavior of a user, like clicks and keystrokes, and build and organize the process, um, which should be automated. So the recorder is mainly for you know persona who understands the process, um, but they don't know how to automate it. So this is mainly for yeah, users with non-automation skills, and RPA Builder is for the ones who then really automate things. Yeah. Uh, 
thanks amma yeah okay one more one more question like if rpa is no code and can we still do transformation in the like database that's a super good question um there are different concepts uh, which you will see so like in data weave it's not possible of course data weave is so powerful um which uh, these capabilities are not possible in rpa builder but what you can do is and this is what the missing transactions or trans, uh, transitions here will uh, uncover so every bot you build you can publish also onto the exchange portal like here these bot processes or automated processes can only be scheduled via time you know? they can only be scheduled time date daily weekly whatever on a sequence while as here the moment you publish it they become available as an api and this api you can use in your mule flows yeah, so you can even embed an automated process as part of your mule flow to unlock a specific data and then use mule to do the data weave transformation yeah and then of course the moment you do it the bot in a mule flow will be called from the mule runtime directly here and the process will be executed the data you wanted to have will be returned to the mule application who can then do the data weave transformation um, directly from in inside a mule application it's also possible the other way around so with composer you have now api sharing available means you can securely uh expose apis which are published in any point exchange to be reused by composer so here you can trigger events like uh, transformation of data using data weave from a api uh, same you can do with uh, rpa so from rpa you can use a http call and say okay here is a set of data please transform it and return the back uh, the data back to me so i can continue on ui automation so these are the different possibilities in terms of transforming the data and really using the power of the different capabilities uh, which are part of the automation suite i know it was a long answer to a short question but does it answer it yeah it did okay yeah. shall we continue or any other yeah good all right so we are getting closer to the demo marathon um so let's see exactly now also super important uh, mulesoft automation is part of the salesforce ecosystem what does it mean so basically you know about salesforce flow so salesforce flow is the salesforce automation uh, suite to automate basically every user experience you built upon salesforce uh, every user interaction every data collection you can use flow builder to really orchestra uh, to build the automation then orchestration to interact uh, this automation with each other you have flow in slack and flow action where you can build custom actions and so on um for all things you go outside of salesforce ecosystem you have to implement APIs apex coding and so on and therefore now mulesoft automation with composer and flow rpa are part of the flow portfolio means composer is its name in the flow context is flow integration and mulesoft rpa is called flow rpa and they help exactly those kind of the uh, system um, which cannot be unlocked easily using the flow uh capabilities you can now use flow integration to connect to netsuite in a easy way without implementing the technical uh complexity with coding and so on so it's a completely no code solution which allows you to integrate any system and if there are system legacy environment which are not providing any interfaces for service cloud we will see a scenario very soon where you automate uh, uh agent activity this can be done with rpa and so you go beyond what is possible already in flow which is already so powerful but with mulesoft automation as part of this flow portfolio you can you can even go beyond what is uh, possible today and the architecture what i've just done is we have seen sorry we have seen uh, this mulesoft automation suite 
which you can see here. So the center point of using automation in Flow Builder is the AnyPoint Exchange. So everything you build is published in AnyPoint Exchange. Mule APIs, and you can directly connect here into the toolbox of uh, Flow Builder and reuse them into your flow orchestration and the flow builder uh, processes to consume a bot directly uh, out of Salesforce. And this is valid for all the Salesforce cloud uh, we have. Okay, so now let's come to the demo marathon and we will directly start with the first one. Um, which is the Salesforce Service Cloud automation. So we will see different automation we have uh, prepared or different demos. The first one is about the service agent. And here I have uh, the storyline. Maybe some of you have already seen this uh, demo, um, but then we will extend exactly this first automation with the next one by adding Einstein bot to the use case. So you will see everything what the service agent was doing is now during peak times done through the Einstein bot. So this will be for the service cloud side, and then we will see how to build a first RPA process. This is also something which is nice to see. You are working with AnyPoint Studio today. It's a way of working you do today. So how is it with RPA? It's very similar. I would say, you, of course, UI automation is a specific area, uh, but as you are familiar with AnyPoint Studio and the way of working is very similar, I think you will get used to it very easily. The next things, the next three demos are uh, inventory management with RPA automation. This is ex actually where I want to um, show you how inventory management can look with uh, using UI automation. And then we will improve it by using API automation with our um, SAP connector. So you will see exactly the difference and why you should always be going for API first automation. And then we will build a simple flow with Composer. So you have seen all the different areas uh, of the MuleSoft automation suite. So let's uh, get started. The very first demo use case, and I will try to pause after every demo. The very first demo use case is about Salesforce Service Cloud. And here we will be talking about um, retail organization called NTO, Northern Trail Outfitter. So what they do is they sell web uh, or they, they, they use a web shop to sell products online. So sport article, merchandise, uh, outdoor products, they sell online and they have a very loyal customer called Rachel. And Rachel is having a great experience interacting with the company. She has ordered few products and these products has been delivered on time and high quality. So now she's planning to go into vacation from next Monday and she has ordered hiking shoes because it's a hiking vacation. And what she did wrong today is she uh, entered the wrong delivery date. So instead of getting the shoes tomorrow, she entered next Friday, which would be too late because she is going on Monday to vacation. So she will be calling now the service center of NTO. And on the other side, she will meet Michael. Michael is a super passionate customer service agent who loves to help, help customer provide the right support takes care basically about everything what customer requests claims and so on so he helps the customer to get there where they want uh, to provide a bad uh, good uh, user experience to them but currently michael is having a super complex workflow yeah? so as he's a service agent he loves and enjoy to work in salesforce service cloud yeah? where he sees all the cases he's working on uh, the resolution time uh, the response time everything all the matrix which are important, uh, important for him as a service agent. So whenever a new customer case comes in via Omnichannel, he checks upon the case. Um, he checks uh, the Einstein suggestion with the next best action. And sometimes, in our case, it will be Rachel, but sometimes a customer need to be put on hold where you then start listening to music. And then Michael has to do some heavy lifting. Like they have a legacy order management system, which has no API at all. So he has to open an RDP connection, log into this RDP, open the uh, legacy application, find Rachel, find her order, update the, manually the request what she has on the delivery data. And then this is not everything. He has to continue the same for NetSuite. 
and of course NetSuite is a web application and it's faster there, but still he has to open the browser, go into NetSuite, update the order with the same information because some of the business analysts, they are working in NetSuite and they want to see the updates there. And once he's done, he comes back to the customer. Sometimes customers just drop off. So he has to call them back to confirm everything was fine and um, your change is done. Um, and in Rachel's case, Rachel waits for it. So he confirmed, Rachel, okay, everything was implemented. You will get your shoes before. So now NTO has realized this because first of all, there is a big inefficiency for the customer who is idling for a period of time. In this case, it can take up to 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes based on how Michael is performing today. And also his productivity is not very good and motivation is not good because he is leaving the service cloud environment and logging into a system which he is not owning at all. So this is also on his productivity, which NTO now wants to improve. And luckily, she, uh, NTO has implemented MuleSoft automation, where now Michael can completely stay in Salesforce Service Cloud. So there is this omni-channel. He receives the cases. He checks upon the cases, also get the advice from Einstein recommendation. And where in the past he has to put the customer on hold, he can continue the conversation and the bot will be triggered directly from Salesforce. And this bot will do basically the heavy lifting what Michael was doing before. He will open the uh, legacy application which has no APIs and unlock it using the UI, uh, do the update, save everything. and. Meanwhile, while this would be ongoing, Mules of Composer is orchestrating the whole automation flow and watching the bot to complete. The moment the bot completes, it will log into uh, NetSuite, update everything and return back to um, Michael. Um, and this process now after automating takes now up to three minutes, which is super fast compared to the 15 minutes, which was before. And this is actually what we will see now in the first demo. And I will be switching into the role of Michael um, so I can tell you my experience. So what you see here, and let me refresh sometimes the quiet, so exactly this, this is what I mean. So I have to just log in, yeah. Multi-factor authentication activated. And now I will first go into this flow where you can see these three steps. For now, later on, we will build our own uh, automation with Composer. But for now, for this demo, it's three steps where the where Composer is waiting for a RPA, for a dedicated RPA process to finish. And then it will take the data from the RPA process, update NetSuite, and update Salesforce as well. In NetSuite, this is basically the order of Rachel, where you can see um, what Michael basically do is he comes to this um, he comes to this NetSuite, write something here the order the change reason why he is doing the change, and then he has to update basically the 23rd of uh, December into what is tomorrow the 16th. Yeah, and same in Salesforce, you can see this is where Michael start working. So I will now switch into the role of Michael, uh, and um, so whenever I come in the morning. To the work, I can see this is my dashboard. After having a coffee, I say, okay, I'm ready to work. So the first thing what I will be doing is I set myself available. So I can see, is there anything coming up to the Omni channel? And of course, I see directly there is a request for change for the delivery date. And this is Rachel. And maybe you hear this uh, ringtone as well. So I can say, accept this case. So now the whole 360 experience will happen on Salesforce Service Cloud. Nothing new. This is out of the box. Salesforce Service Cloud, where I will see. Okay, I've started to work on the case. Um, I can see here the customer details, account details as well, and I see here the subject details. What the case is about. So it's about the wrong delivery date. I need to update. So I can start calling Rachel back now. And uh, while I'm doing it, you see. Einstein has already analyzed the case and it's recommending something to me, which is the update of the delivery date by offering a loyalty package to uh, Rachel. 
I say this is interesting. I want to accept it. So let's see what the suggestion is about. And now screen flow takes over where RPA comes in. So now I will be guided as a service agent. I have here my script. So I thank Rachel for being a loyal customer with us so long. And as an appreciation, we want to provide a loyalty package to her, which includes this uh, cost free update of the date. Is this something she's interested in? Of course, she would say, yes, I'm interested in it. I'm going next week to vacation. If it's possible, let's bring my shoes um, by tomorrow on the 16th. I would say, OK, yeah, the date is available. Let me press next. So now it will be just the information for me as a service agent. The moment I will click now next, a bot will be triggered. Let me do it. So now a few things will happen. The bot is triggered and of course you will not see it running here because the bot is now running in a secured environment on a specific and dedicated machine we don't want the bot to run on michael's machine yeah and starting the application so michael will be stopped and blocked on his desktop so michael can now continue his conversation with rachel and i forgot one thing i have to trigger this as well sorry my mistake he can start uh, to continue his uh, conversation with Rachel. Um, and what you also see is while the bot has started to run, um, it has commented on the case. So it will resolve everything once uh, the automation has completed the order management system in NetSuite and it will close the case by that. And unfortunately, I, I'm not sure if the bot already ran because if it did, then my composer flow will not uh, work. We, let's wait for uh, two, three, uh, I think a couple of time until the bot hopefully completes because this is also uh, the demo devil where I didn't press the start button. But let's see if it didn't uh, finish in 30 seconds then I will just trigger it again from Salesforce. So normally such a flow is deployed, right? In my environment, as this is my personal environment, I always need to trigger the test button, which I, of course I forgot now. Uh, however, um, this is deployed in real time in production and activated. So you don't need to do what I'm, I will be doing now. So let me just quickly reactivate the things just refresh the case and if it's not closed it should come up again here with the suggestion of einstein and i will basically do the same but this time a bit faster um, let's see yeah it's still not executed so it was executed but composer was not watching so that's the reason why i have to redo it however i think you got the picture um, let's do next and of course it will comment now again on the case you will see here if i press refresh it will now comment again on the case um, because of my mistake however let's wait so now the bot has started to run in a secured environment uh, on a windows machine opening the order management system updating the order and while the bot is running Composer is also watching the execution of the bot. The moment uh, the bot completes the execution, it will continue here um, to process the automation flow by updating NetSuite and Salesforce as well. So you see now it is processing. So while this processing is happening, you can see these fields are empty. This is uh, 23rd of uh, December. So I refresh it. And you will see here uh, the memo will be updated, hopefully. MuleSoft automation has successfully completed. Uh, the process order management system has been updated in, in NetSuite also with the latest order information. And here you see 16th of uh, December has been executed. So now you may wonder, OK, this is fine. NetSuite was updated. What happened as well? In Salesforce, it has also closed and resolved the case because it everything was executed you can see here rpa bot has commented uh, that all the systems were updated with the latest order information with the timestamp so i'm closing the case so while i'm being michael rachel is on the phone i can confirm her everything was fine you will get your shoes by tomorrow and you can go then into a hiking vacation which is also completely uh, fine for her so now you have seen that composer was watching the RPA bot, something in NetSuite happened and something in Salesforce happened, but where did the bot 
as I mentioned, the board run on a secured environment. In, in order to show you how the board looks like, and later on we will build a board uh, based on a use case. This is the board. Yeah? It has three steps where the first step is about opening our order management system, then updating the order and closing the order. So while the bot is deployed, I've brought it a copy of it back into my uh, development environment uh, to show you how it will run when you execute it. So I will just hit the run button. And what you will see now is it will open the order management application, which in my case is the emulation of it. It's just a simple emulation uh, of the order management application where it search for the customer, it finds and updates the promise by date, saves the data and close everything and basically um, and make sure everything is saved and closed properly so the data is saved. And the moment this bot has executed, what happens is Composer is watching it and it is defined as a trigger. So the, on completion, it will continue to process the rest. And this is how MuleSoft Automation is perfectly working in a, in a service cloud environment in, together with Salesforce, where the bot can be directly consumed and shared in a Salesforce ecosystem and can be taken, uh, triggered directly from there. So now let's go back to the next one. But I want to pause again here for a second in terms of questions. Yeah, I mean, there was a question on, <clears throat> so you showed one composer, right? So the question was whether it's a composer or it's a Salesforce workflow. It's a, uh, what, what was the question? So if it's composer or Salesforce workflow? Yeah, yeah. So. Our composer is watching the triggers, right? Triggers, then yes. suit, and then so some, you know, the promote li limited. I don't know the, who is this user. So they were asking question, right? Whether it's a MuleSoft composer or Salesforce flow. Ah, okay. So what I what you have seen in my demo is a MuleSoft composer. There's of yeah. course the version which is embedded in Salesforce, which is capable of doing exactly the same. So, but I was uh, showing you this uh, MuleSoft composer. There's also the other version where MuleSoft Composer for Salesforce is used in a Salesforce UI, the same functionality is presented. Uh, but in my case, it was uh, MuleSoft Composer. And the triggering of the bot happened through the Salesforce flow. Yeah? The moment you remember through the wizard, when I go to next, 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 and accepted everything, um, it has triggered the bot via API through Salesforce flow and this trigger was being watched by Composer to complete. Yeah, so you trigger something from somewhere, then Composer is always watching a process to complete on the trigger to the automation flow. So there was different components involved. So with Salesforce flow, I have triggered the bot and Composer was the whole automation orchestration. Does it answer the question? Looks like that. Okay, one more question we have. Yes, he said, thanks. One more question we have. So now this is a complete automation suit, right? So the question is, Composer and MuleSoft RPA, do we need a separate subscription for that? Um, do you need a separate subscription to that in terms of if you have any point already today? Mm -hmm. Yes, so MuleSoft automation is an offering. Um, uh, uh, consumption-based offering, uh, which includes a limited capacity on any point, yeah, a defined number of uh, cores uh, you will get, V cores. Uh, you have MuleSoft Composer plus RPA. So these three capabilities are bundled into this MuleSoft automation offering. So it's a new package, yes. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's all. Okay. So now let's continue the story of Michael and Rachel, um, of also from NTO. So NTO has now automated the process, which is super cool. But now events during the calendar year are happening like Black Friday, where NTO knows by default that during that time or even uh, uh, Christmas and New Year or Easter, whatever event is happening during the year, if there is a special discount on their web shop, there will be a increase in the cases 
means you have still a high number of cases where you don't want your customer to wait, right? So you don't want them to idle in a queue in an omni-channel for the service agent to further process it. During the normal time, the automation has helped a lot to improve the customer experience. But now during those kind of events, they have implemented automation. Yeah? And this, um, the service cloud agent need to go through this process in service cloud and continue his discussion with the customer by even having automation in place. But in a peak time where you will have 30 times more cases, automation is good, but it is not it is not really solving the issue for letting the customer idle in the omni-channel before a service agent can address the issue. So there are different things what NTO can do now. NTO either can hire for this specific uh, period of time new people and enable them to invest a bit more or they can enable a service cloud functionality uh, which is through einstein bot so now to uh, to david automation the service agent are the first touch for the customer right so they take uh, a case and validate it and understand and then try to solve it so with the new implementation now they say okay let's move the whole first touch and uh, starting the conversation to a chatbot. And the chatbot will now take care if customer uh, issue can be solved or not. So the chatbot is the first point of contact during these events uh, where it provides through the chatbot functionality, of course, the assistant. So customer can decide, okay, chatbot is able to help me by providing a defined uh, menu or no, I want to talk to an agent, but this is then involved with queuing time with waiting time so customers can decide okay it's just a normal change upon an order or shipment or address this is something what the bot can help the chatbot can help by triggering the automation with Microsoft automation through rpa and composer and then complete the whole flow by um, sending out the confirmation email to the customer that everything was updated and again asking here continuing his conversation with the customer and asking for further support and again customer can decide if they want to talk to an agent or it solved the issue so they can continue and close the case basically um, with this approach what you do is during these peak times you make sure that the uh, your, your professional, your service agents, they're focusing really on issues which really matters, which cannot be automated, um, where you require legal context and so on. So these kind of things, uh, then they can really focus on while as the chatbot can do rest. Yeah? And this is also something which I've quickly prepared. Let's see um, if it is working. And for this, we will do basically the same uh, demo. Yeah? So what I will do now is, um, in Salesforce, I will not reset the case, so you will say this will be changed, but the rest will uh, the same will be the same. And instead of this flow, I have now another flow, and this is also where NTO can decide. Okay, normally I'm deploying this flow, the first one which you have just walked through, and during these peak times, I will deploy the chatbot flow, which includes much much more steps um, to it where you of course start with the trigger right so the bot will now trigger rpa bot so you need to have this trigger defined update in netsuite will happen and then the bot will also get records from salesforce because what will happen is that the chat bot will create a case so let's say the automation fails still the case is in new so that a service agent can still uh, act upon it if it doesn't fail then everything is fine it will get the case uh, loop across all the new cases and then close it and i see here i need to just reconnect my gmail account to send out the email let me quickly do it so this is fine so the moment i update and close the case in salesforce i will be sending out the email to rachel which will then be updating uh, her on the latest uh, the latest uh, updates on her record so let me put on test do it correctly now so the way customers will work, this is the inbox of Rachel. So you can see here, uh, Rachel will receive few emails. I'm on the customer portal. So I'm Rachel pretending to be Rachel, right? So here, let us let me write here, Rachel Smith, and this will be rachel.smith at, uh, let's say, gmail.com. 
and I can now start because I want to change my, the delivery date of the shoe delivery. So I can say, let's start chatting. Yeah. So an agent is on its way. It's not an agent. It's not Michael anymore. It's really a chatbot. So the chatbot says, I'm Max, your digital assistant. How can I help you? So the way it is working now is it offers this functionality to talk to an agent. So then she has a queuing time and so on. But it says, OK, you, you want to learn about new offerings during Black Friday or during this event. You want to manage your orders, provide feedback. So this is the menu, guided menu, which is provided to Rachel. And now I can say, manage my orders. What would you like to do next? I would like to update shipping, basically the same what I've just uh, done. So now he's asking me for a customer ID because this could be everyone, right? So I've added a couple of security here. So let's say this is my customer ID. It takes this ID and it will send an email with a code which I have to enter here. And you see the code I have received here already, 29203. Just to secure, okay, I'm the I'm Rachel Smith. I'm the one who is attached uh, to this customer ID, and the email is right, and I received the code. Fine, okay. So it validates, and it's okay. We found this shoes with the order number in your uh, order, which has not been fulfilled yet. Is this something you want to update? I say yes. This is actually what I want to update. So what would you like to do next? Huh? I would like to change the delivery address, the date or talk to an agent. I can see waiting time is uh, 32 minutes, which is a lot. So I say, okay, I can change it. I don't need an agent for it. So 23rd of um, December. So there is a possibility that providing me with a few dates, which I can now select as a new delivery date. So there's an express edition. I can say, okay, here I'm already gone on vacation. I don't need it. I need it by the 16th. So tomorrow let's enter it. And now what it will do, it will create a case with this number and we'll say, okay, is there anything else? I can still talk to an agent and, or say, I want to close the conversation here and conversation. So I'm as Rachel, I'm done, right? So I say, oh, everything fine. I received this reference number. So I will be watching out for an email to confirm everything is done, but let's see what happens in Salesforce Service Cloud. Yeah? So this is the Salesforce Service Cloud. Let me refresh. So we should see, a new case appearing. Yeah, this case is now in status new. It has been created by the Einstein bot and it's about the recent order of Rachel for the update delivery. Um, so this is something which has been created. Why did the bot create it? Because it can be that the automation fails. It cannot continue. So the not be processed. And this is a documentation for the service agent. Okay, they can still come here and see, okay, there's an open case which was not fulfilled by the Einstein bot. It is still open. So it needs to be processed. Yeah. Additionally, you can see Composer has already started to process. So it identified the RPA bot was executed. Now it's updating and getting the data and processing further. So let's see NetSuite. This was from the previous one. So I will just refresh it. Hopefully it should be updated by the Einstein board details and so on. Just few comments on it. And also I should very soon receive here an email. Yeah, so this email tells me, dear Rachel, your order has been fulfilled and so on. Uh, delivery date has been updated. This case, which was created, will be closed now. Have fun with your hiking shoes. Yeah, so means it will be closed now. Currently, it's on new. So let me refresh it. So this case is closed. And there is, yeah, that was it, I think. There is no additional comment on it. It was closed by MuleSoft Automation because these systems were updated. So that's the usual scenario. Customer will be informed by email. So that was the automation of the same scenario, but for exactly those kind of events which are happening on calendar, uh, where you offer different kind of discounts and um, where you have manual effort involved in further processing your customer cases and uh, improve the experience. Again, here I want to pause, a, a pause for a second because now we have seen two different scenarios. One was where we have started the automation. You have seen automation between human and bot. And this was like a fully automated scenario where customer can 
self serve themselves using and interacting with a chatbot. So any questions? Amit, we have a couple of questions. <clears throat> so yeah. First question is, how bot will handle the execution if there are errors? Very good question. So there is very similar, not 100% similar to any point uh, API or Mule uh, apps. You have a error handling. Whenever something happens, you can return a defined uh, message from the bot that something failed. And this message can be then processed by composer in the flow. And then you can define your own logic and uh, use it for it. Yeah? So it's the, we provide um, the way, uh, we provide the capability to handle errors uh, in RPA bot directly. Okay, okay, fair enough. We have one more question, which is like, could you please help us to understand how this Salesforce case is linked with MuleSoft Composer flow, which triggers the RPA bot? how they are linked to the composer flow yeah that's what the question is yeah how this salesforce case is linked with the of composer flow which triggers the rpa bot so basically what i do is in composer what we do is basically here um, the moment the bot is triggered and completed it will update netsuite the regular scenario, it means it has updated the order management system. This was the first step. And only on successful execution, it will continue to NetSuite, update NetSuite, and then it will look for all the different new cases. In my case, of course, you need to apply a different logic, but I am getting, because it's my environment, right? So I'm getting the last case which has been created. And with this case, as this is a list, I'm iterating through it and then closing this case which I retrieved. Of course, if you have a live production environment, you have to apply a completely different logic here because you cannot get all the cases and iterate through it. You have to really get the right case in terms of look for Einstein or the Einstein bot creates a case with the dedicated uh, field where you say exactly, okay, this is how I will be linking the customer data which RPA is processing and then link it and bring it into condition and then process only those cases and close it in terms of what I am doing in my simple scenario, just getting the last one. Okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of questions. Okay, so can we use RPA bot in multiple composer flow? And how would RPA bot behave if invoked at the same time from two different composer flow? So parallel sure. processing, basically. At the same time, if two composer flows are triggering, mm -hmm. how the bot will handle that scenario? So the bot, maybe from the wording, let's see what we automate. Yeah? So let me go back to this slide and just build it out. Okay. So what is a bot? A bot is a program very similar to the runtime and a bot is deployed on an operation system windows wherever yeah and this bot is just waiting for the automated process to be executed right so the automated processes they are built with rpa builder and deployed on the server and again deployed on dedicated bot machines yeah? so you assign okay this is the process which is assigned to a specific bot our order management uh, process. Let's say it's assigned to this bot. So now it depends on the bot configuration. So the way MuleSoft uh, RPA, uh, you can either configure a bot in a desktop mode, where it will handle only one session, or you can say, I want to establish secured session. And a secured session is uh, the, the possibility to run the same process in parallel mode. We have done few lab tests internally where you can have up to 10 secured session running at the same time with the same automated process running on the same bot. So it will create multiple instances of the same execution on the same machine. So it's able to handle it by creating these uh, multiple uh, instances, but it need to be a secured execution configuration on the bot machine itself. 
does it answer the question looks like that so <clears throat> yeah it is thank you okay uh, can we take two more questions or i mean yes of course okay. of course we okay. can take so if business process changes right so do we need to redeploy the bot and the composer flow if the business process change it depends so what changed so is it the rpa bot which changed then uh, you will just update the bot and deploy it and composer will be using the same bot right so you don't need to update composer you just need to update rpa bot but the bot in the, the automation flow in composer will not be updated it will it is using the same bot if uh, application changes which is in composer then you don't need to touch rpa you will just update the composer flow does it make sense yeah. okay he said got it okay. okay and final questions okay so uh, can we handle errors using any point studio or any point manager okay nilima in rp any point studio won't come into picture so can you elaborate that which is cost effect efficient between any point runtime versus mule composer which is more cost efficient between any point runtime and mule composer yeah well it, it depends because both are headless so the runtime in any point is using apis composer is using apis now the question would be who is the owner of the automation is it more the people the same team like the any point team they are owning automation then i would always go with any point because it's more sustainable if it's the business team then i would go with with composer because they can do the automation without interacting with the it in the back end so it really depends where the ownership is um, to answer the efficiency question um, if it's on the business side composer if the team is the same using these three capabilities then i would go with any point does it make sense nilima is that you're looking for is that the answer to your question yeah thank you yeah me that's that's all from the question point of view go ahead okay so let's now continue with um, I hear my voice twice. I don't know if it's only me or. Okay, so now now it's much better. Thank you. So let's continue with the next one. How to build your first bot? Why I've put this in quotes? Because the bot we don't build, right? The bot is something which provides to you, and it's installed on your machine. Um, we build an automated process. So, but uh, when you are talking about you know RPA most of the time is let's build a bot so that's the reason but in, in reality it's the automated process you are building and the the process we will be building is linked to a guy also working for nto northern trail outfitters we have seen they have these legacy environments and harold is one of the last cobol developer left in the market and a very experienced it system engineer he loves to take care or he takes care about the legacy apps uh, running in NTO, Northern Trail Outfitters, and he doesn't like Jira because Jira is the go-to tool for the modern developers. So he don't like to work in uh, on Jira and that's important for NTO. They don't want to lose him. They want to make him uh, satisfied. So they provide his task on daily basis in a text file where he copies it into a favorite into his favorite legacy task application which has no api available he needs of course two hours sometimes on daily basis to update the task to enter the new task and so on which are coming through the text file and this is something which NTO want to improve so it's a fun scenario more not a realistic one but to show you the capabilities what you can do with rpa so now NTO want to automate it in order to automate and this approach you can basically apply to any process you want to automate with rpa is understand first what are the manual tasks involved right so and i would even go that far and say if you are the rpa developer execute the manual task one time to understand how the screen behaves 
how the flow is created, how the work is done. Um, so in um, in Harold's case, it's like he receives this uh, file, so he reads the file. So he has to understand, okay, how many tasks are in there? So he reads line by line, open the task at per line, he create a new task, enter the data, save the task, and do the whole thing until all lines are entered in the task gap, and then he close uh, the task gap. So that's what he is doing manually, and this need to be automated. So what I would suggest always is understand where is a iteration where you have to loop what are the repetitive tasks what are the tasks which are executed once only so now let's un, uh, uncover it so what are the tasks which he has to uh, do when he receives the file so he opens it of course he doesn't count the line because he's a human he can see okay there are 20 lines 10 lines 30 lines so he just go line by line but in order for us to understand what is the content we of course need to count the lines. This is the first thing. It will be happening only one time. Then we will need to open the task app and then read line by line into a loop to enter the task into the task app and then save every task. And once we are done, we exit the loop and close the task app. And this is the scenario which we will see now in a live demo and see how it is perceived by Mules. So let me close this one. And also here I have prepared hopefully already something called task creation. And this task creation is an empty activity, right? So I have nothing more. It's more for the enablement of how to work with RPA Builder. And this is RPA Builder, what you see here. These processes you create in RPA Manager. And the moment you put them into build phase, they are appearing into your a repository and you can open them. This is what I've already done. I've created an empty process. I've put them into build phase. So it's appearing in my IDE and I can see it. So I'm assigned to this uh, task. So now I want to automate. it. First of all, what you need to understand is in MuleSoft RPA Builder, you have something called toolbox. Compare it with a Mule palette. It might be very similar. And this toolbox is allowing you uh, using pre-built templates to automate any user interaction on a uh, UI. Yeah, so you have here different kind of sections like app automation. This is mainly used for desktop application. Yeah? We will be using this exactly for our task app, but you have also additional things. Let's say you are you open from this Windows machine, you open a Citrix desktop session or remote desktop session, then you can use image search and control to automate even those kind of things which are super difficult to be automated on UI. Um, this is also possible. Document processing, where you can uh, read uh, PDFs, handwritten, scanned, and so on. Excel operation, you have file operation, reading data from text files and so on. We will be using a couple of these activities as well. Flow control, where you have different kind of things, select case, uh, you can force errors, you can force okay state, you can go into a managed uh, special block to handle errors. Um, this is what you use, you have looping and so on. You have general uh, things where you can exit workflows and so on, mail operations. So different kind of pre-built templates are provided for variable handling, web automation and so on. And you will be using these to automate a process. What is the process we want to automate? So let's take a look on it. I have here this um, task uh, file where you see this task test file contains 30 tasks and you have two information separated by a semicolon so you have first of all the name and the description really not this is not reality it's more like a how to do something uh, so what Harold will be doing is Harold always opens this task file and what he does is basically he comes to this place and he say okay these are my task file you see they are already entered here in my uh, in my version, but I will be doing and automating it again. So what he does is basically he say, I want to create a new task and let's see, uh, I copy this, right? And I return back, he's a, a bit um, old. So he switched between the screen and then he said, okay, here's the title. I entered the title and now let's 
go for the description and he does this. And the moment he has done it, he can say create task. The task is in the in the system. Yeah? So this is how it is working. So let me just delete this task. And now we will automate exactly this. We will iterate across all lines and then put everything in. So let's see how it can be done. So the first thing what we have to do and we can refer back to our vis visualization. We want to open the text file and count the lines. Yeah? So let's do that in order to count the line. Let's say if there is something with read. So you see here is a filter uh, available, a text box where I can enter something, a keyword that will come up with different kind of uh, templates available. And I can see, OK, there is read from text file. I saw it was a text file. So let's drag and drop it here. <coughs> Sorry. So now important is, and this is my suggestion, the moment you work with these templates, you can see I can drag and drop it again, very similar to any point, you know, they do like appending the index after this. Make sure to make it readable. As a name field, say count total lines of task file. So here you define, okay, this is something which will help you don't on long, long terms. If you open the same process after a week, you know exactly it's readable and it's easier to understand. And then you show, okay, where is the task, task file? So let show me the task file. I go to the area and say, okay, maybe it's here. I'm not sure. Is it here? No, it's not here. It was the wrong one. So let me go to the right location for it. Yeah, it's in my task under documents. And here I can select the smaller one. I will not go for the large one. So this contains only six tasks. So let's say this is fine. And now I have the possibility to say, I want to read the whole file. I want to just read the last line. I want to read the first or single line uh, based upon uh, index, or I want to re uh, read a range of lines, lines. So there's the flexibility you can see. With one template, you can address different use cases, but we are going to read the entire file because our aim is to count the line. So let's count it here. And the next step would be now open the task app. Yeah, how can I open the task app? I have it here in, in my task menu. So I can open it either like this, but I want to do it a bit differently. So let me right click and get the paths. And this path I can copy. And now I can say, I need something which I can call a exe file. Yeah. And here, when you look closely, you will find something or you can search for it. Sorry. You can search for it called run program in the control area and you can enter it here directly. So let's say open task app. So now he says specify the file. I say, okay, here is a file. And now he says, okay, what's the working directory? I say working directory is the same, like where the file is located. And now I can even test it for those kind of things. Let's test it. It's this is the task file which I've created. That's fine. So now I am counting the line and I'm opening the task file. The next thing was to now create an iteration. And the iteration can be created because now I've opened the text file and I've opened the task. Yet, so now I need to create the task. And in order to create the task, I need to first loop through an iteration. You can see if I have entered loop, it's coming up with different kind of loops. So Excel controlled loops. So if you have an Excel file, including data, you could loop there. You have uh, you can break a loop or file controlled loop, which I could be using, but I want to show the uh, nature, the normal one where you can drag and drop it here. And now you can say, okay, what is it? Again, you can remain the name with the loop or you can say iterate through a file, line by line. So now he's asking, okay, how much iteration do you want? How much iteration do we want? You remember we have counted the line. So this would be the maximum iteration of our uh, logic. So let's say I want to take the line count, which you get out from there. So I'm linking already this, what I'm reading here with the next step, where I want to start with the first line and I want to increment with, the, with one line. So it will go line by line. So now the next thing would be again, read the line. I will now say read from text file. And here I can say read line 
by line. So what is the text file? I could, of course, parameterize it, but in my case, we will just use the fix value. And again, I will select my task file. And now I can say I want to read a single line, not the entire file, but the single line, because I want to iterate and work with the string, which I get. He says, okay, which line number you want to use? And again, I can say, I want to use a dynamic one. I want to use the iteration number because I've set the total count of the maximum iteration uh, here on the loop. So I want to use the current iteration number and read this line out. So this is what I'm doing here. And now what uh, I want to show you is like, you can write a log in order to see what's happening. So write log and let's write it down. Yeah? So we will write what we are receiving there in the line by line. So let's say we say read text and we will log this into our uh, into our uh, workflow run result. And I will mark it as arrow because then they are easier to uh, find in the log. Otherwise you have a lot of infos where you have to read carefully. So I will mark them red. So let's run it. It will open the task if it's okay for me, but I want to see what it is reading out. Yeah? So I've started, it should be very fast. You can see it's red, of course, because I've marked it as error. The task app is opened as well, so I can close it here. So the, in the workflow result, look for it. If you don't see it, you can always go here to view and say, um, show workflow run result. And the moment you open it, you can scroll down and you see these are my write logs failure. failure. So the message was here, T0 training, semicolon and then the description so it's reading the whole line now what i need to do i need to separate the name from the uh, description so and how i do it i can now disable this so let's delete it so and now say i want to uh, convert to an array so string to an array the string i will receive from the line by line and let's say split values what i want to split I want to split the outcome of the read line, so the text, and the separator is my semicolon. So now I'm uh, splitting this into an array. And the moment I split it into an array, I can read an array. And the first array is read title. Title, from where I want to read it, I have only one array in my whole flow so far, so result as array. This is the first item. It's always the first item, the title. The same I can either do like this or I can say copy paste. I will copy paste it here. Double click, read description. Description, and this is the second value. So now I'm reading both files, both items correctly. And now I can continue to work in the app automation. So in order to do the app automation, I can drag and drop the app session here. It need to be inside the loop because I'm reading the data and now I need, the app is opened. I can see the app is open. So I need to work on the app here. The, there are different ways. I can continue by using these templates or you can go into a quick creation mode, which is also nice because now the whole, you know, the whole UI is minimized. And you can say, okay, I want to continue here in the app session. Sorry, I want to continue here in the app session. I want to set the cursor here correctly. So we know we are in the app session here. No, it's not really doing it. No, hello. Sorry for that. Okay, so what I will be doing is I will start the app here bring it, resize it, move it here to this location. And now I can do the quick creation mode and say, first thing, this will be the state where I'm in. So it's reading the file in a loop, line by line. The next step is to create a task. So I will be clicking on this create task button. So click app element is the thing what I want to use here. Click app element. So he says, show me the app element. So I say, this is the create task button. I want to identify it and he's asking me hover it and press F2. This is what I'm doing now. I hover it with my mouse and press F2. He identifies via 
the system properties x pass and so on and identifies it i say okay this is actually the one you want to click or you should be clicking that's it so after you have clicked i click now manually on it what to do next yeah, so the next thing would be now entering the title so let's say set text to an app element and this is again the same behavior so set title i can see show me so i can move the mouse here say this is the title you got it yes this is exactly the one i want to use and now what is the input text right you remember we have read from array the title so you can say now this title i want to read as string that's it and after this i want to do basically the same set text on a description field so set description identify object click here stop identifying and now i can link the parameter which i've created here with the second one read description and once i'm done create task so let's again say click on a app element show me i can press f2 stop capturing and here i can say this is safe task and say okay now i can say that's it after this it will come back here and i need to just close the application so let's return back we have our app session defined and now if i want to close the application what i can do is i can check upon the process i could of course locate the close button and close it but this is much faster where i say okay i want to close the application so close task app now by process name you should know of course what is the name of this task app it's not launched so uh, it is launched it is here so let me see why it's not appearing here it should be main.exe how do i find it out you can go into the task manager go to details then you see main exe and this is the same icon so most of the times you will see it is there otherwise you have to go through processes and see what is the app you jump then to the processes and so on and find it out through here so now i have basically selected this process and now he's asking what if this process exists i can say do nothing start the program or kill the process in my case i will kill it and then it's closed and that is something which i have now automated and let's see if it's running so i will bring the initial state of everything and hit on the run button and now rpa will do everything so it will go in and split the values and really create the thing here using UI automation. Um, and once he's done six tasks, I've only, I've taken the shorter one, the shorter file, but this is how it's working. You see completely no code. And the cool thing is it looks very similar to the thing which I've planned here when you divide it. Okay, how should I be proceeding here in terms of manual execution and what are the relevant steps to automate it. Again, let's uh, open up for questions uh, for this process now. Any questions? Yeah, so <clears throat> we have one question. Do we have API action with the toolbox here? Well, that's a good one. I would say, yes, we have API action. So this is the rest call, which you can use and say, here you can call basically any API using this uh, rest client wizard where you can operate here, provide the base URL, URI ex extension, the expression you want to read, you have header parameters, query parameters, request body, and you can also parameterize it and so you can bring in parameter values here and parameterize the values you are creating and send it out to whatever you want to do so okay. yes it is possible um this is super important you know we want to interconnect the tool suites with each other so this is what is doing enabling to consume apis you have built with any point yeah, that's the question. I think there were three related questions and that's the answer to those three questions. Okay. So then I would say let's continue, right? Yep. 
Okay, so let's come to our next demo, which is inventory management. And the scenario here is Martin. Martin is a biotech technologist at an R&D uh, pharma company or R a pharma R&D company. And what he does is he develops products and services for the pharma industry based on his research. But due to uh, current uh, resources and uh, manpower, uh, he's also taking care of the inventory. Uh, so whenever a new product is uh, built, they need to have different materials available to build this new pharmaceutical product. Sometimes he has to really do it on daily basis. Uh, what he has to do on repetitive work is he has to log into SAP. He has to check if this material is available. So he checks every day around 10 materials and per materials he takes around about 15 to 20 minutes because he has to check on the stock. He has to get approval from his boss because he don't has the power to order directly. The moment he has the approval, he can purchase the order. So he goes really into SAP, do the purchase ordering, entering the data, release the order, and then send the confirmation again uh, via, um, via email. And this can be based on his performance. Of course, the same things which happens with manual task, repetitive work, error prone, not reliable, time consuming for such a professional resource, um, higher labor cost and not accurate. So this is something where he is struggling on daily basis um, and we can automate it. Yeah? We can automate it using UI, using our RPA solution. And this is what I've already done. And what I want to show you here is that it is of course, faster than the human, first of all, repeatable, resilient, and accurate. And I have automated it in the same manner because this workflow is a BPMN. Uh, you can build using RPA manager and then you load it in the RPA builder and then really do the same what we have done for the task app. Every each of these boxes, you put a kind of template and script um, and this will be executed in a flow. And this is what we will be doing. So this is actually the end result, what I have built. We will see it in action in terms of execution. And what I want to highlight again, you know, we were talking about the API first approach. So it reduces per material already the execution time to three minutes, which is a huge, in a huge improvement, 15 to three minutes. This is really nice. And let's see it in action before we improve the process with APIs. So, and here for, I need to load my right process. Yeah, let's save it. And the process you can see here, it's super small. So let's enlarge it a bit. And behind each of these actions, you can see there is a set of activities which I've put it in. So let me open all of those. So we can see what is this and what is this white box as well. Yeah. So let me quickly open all of those. Can take just a few moment. Okay, this one and now the last one. Okay, so all are open. So what I'm doing here, first of all, I'm logging into SAP by using username, password, uh, the browser session, basically. And then I continue to check on material. Yes, these are all automated activities. So the blue one are all automated. The moment I check, I send out the available stock and ask for 100 items to be ordered via email. This will be here as well. Um, and let me check the email session. Unfortunately, it could be that it's not working. Max Mule, okay, so this is the, the other one. So I will need to open this as well. And the moment it sends out the email, it waits for a human. So this is also something super nice. Using this BPM and what you can organize is, of course, you want to automate things. You can automate it with UI actions and you can put a manual task in between to pause the bot and wait for the human to confirm, yes, this is something I want to order. And this confirmation can be done either via RPA manager, where you can send out an email, the person receives the email, and then he can log into RPA manager, provide the data and confirm the bot to continue or reject it. Yeah? So if it con it's confirmed, 
the board will continue the purchase order, release the order, execute, and confirm again by the email with the attached PDF. Yeah? So this is basically the process which I have been building. Let me just quickly run it and show you how it is executing. So first of all, what it does is it opens uh, SAP via NetWeaver business client, so in a browser. You can see here it will log into SAP and now SAP remembers basically the last the last screen I was in. Uh, so it is in the display customers here. What RPA need to do is it need to understand and it need to bring me back to the SAP home screen where I can execute a, a, a transaction. So if you know SAP, there's always this home screen from where you execute different kind of uh, transaction, which is just happening now. So you can see it has brought me to the uh, main screen. And from here, I can build reusable components, which I can share with others as well. So it will now execute the MMB1 uh, on this screen. It could be possible or something has changed. Actually, it should be executing it. So let's see what happened. And this is uh, the risk, you know, um, because when you build a process, you never know if there was something deployed or maybe the uh, screen has changed, something which cannot be recognized by the bot. So what the bot is doing, and you will see it failing now, it is looking for something which it cannot find. So there is a, um, there's a timeout in the uh, in the uh, automation where it waits 45 seconds before it breaks. And basically what it does is it says, I was not able to find the screen. Yeah, so this could happen uh, because the screen has maybe changed uh, from the way I have uh, used it. So you see what I am using, I'm just searching for a dedicated pattern on the whole screen and it could be that this pattern has moved a bit the pixel has changed whatever and this is causing my script to break so let me now log in manually and let's see if we can uh, execute it still execute it so what was it sap i think yeah let's go in here with a predefined password i need to do the same basically so now let's go here start screen and let me now see if I can identify it. So I can say, test this, please. So he's testing it. And he says, now I find it. Yeah, so it would be like something was not uh, available or whatever. So this is why it did not execute. So I have two options. Let's go for the right one. So I will save everything and just rerun everything to see if it is now working and you can make this stable so i've built it you know just to show how ui automation can be perceived on sap ui built in checks and so on to really make sure that the ui automation is stable what i did i did it really operation by operation straightforward uh, assuming that everything will be prepared as i'm expecting yeah? Now it will do basically the same. It will close this um, dialogue and then continue, uh, open the SAP easy access and go back here. And now let's see if it will continue here. So yes, it is now identifying. It could be really from the sizing here. Something was not focused and you can um, figure this out. So now what it's doing is it's checking the inventory for a defined material. Even we have it on stock, I will reorder it uh, like, um, like I'm expecting it to uh, not be available. And now you see there's a human action. So it is now paused. Normally, if this bot is in production or this automation process is in production, I will receive an email in RPA Manager where I can confirm, please continue. Uh, also, what I will be receiving here is, let me go Gmail and Max Mule is there something? Max.mule at Embrace. Let's see if we have it. Yeah, so you see here stock information came in. So I, it's telling me it's available, but still, if you want to order, please confirm it. So I can say, yes, please go ahead and order whatever you want to do, do it. 
now so you you will see it will now continue to do the purchase order on this specific material by me21n and now it will enter a lot of uh, data uh, this is what martin has to enter manually so this is now automated it will look now for a specific uh, tab click on the tab first of all find it in this uh, situation it can be any other last safe view uh, so it's really checking upon those entering the purchase organization the group the company code and now entering the vendor then providing the line items on the material what is the quantity it need to be ordering and then entering also the plant for which this order should be executed i think it's thousand yeah and now once it is done it will save it you see on the bottom there is this number uh, which was created so it will now continue and get the release code for this uh, order and then release it and um, execute again the purchase ordering so you see here fr was the release code he got now he is go going to execute the purchase order and uh, release it so first of all it uh, enters here fr or search for fr on the available code so it's it will find here or click on fr and now you see supervisor it found the order it will select it first of all get the pdf out of it save it locally and once it's safe it will find it was already there so if it exists it will overwrite otherwise it will save it save it so it existed overwrite now go back and release it so order is released everything is fine and now he can confirm the email and close the rest so let's see if i received the email a new one purchase order came in you can see here this was the order number and i can see here i've attached the confirm here with the order data and so on so this uh, worked and uh, it was a even in the beginning with a small exception but this is how the whole process was executed uh, with a ui automation and let's go back now martin has saved time yeah? so martin has reduced the auto the with the automation up to three minutes per material um so now you can even do it better so this is you know already a super benefit for michael uh, for martin's team uh, because they don't have to do it now manually, but you can even do better, especially with MuleSoft automation, and you get rid of all the stuff which you uh, have seen. So MuleSoft automation, we have seen it. It's providing different capabilities. RPA is just one capabilities uh, of this. So RPA allows you to do what uh, we have discussed with the legacy application, unstructured data, but there's more to it, right? We have any point as well. And if you are an AnyPoint customer and you are using SAP already, so things you have done already, yeah, you are created uh, APIs, use these APIs as well. Uh, and additionally, you have also Composer. And this is the benefit of the whole suite where you can say whatever I built in RPA, I can use in Composer. Whatever I built in AnyPoint, I can use in Composer and orchestrate my operation and uh, automation directly here. And I want to show you now this part, this AnyPoint part, how we can unlock SAP with the same transaction uh, by automating it with AnyPoint Mule Flow where with the API first methodology. Why would you want to do it? You remember the RPA bot took three minutes here. What do you see here is like five seconds. So let's let's be let it be ten seconds. It's super fast. So it's thirty times faster than the RPA bot. And this is what I want to show you as well. Yeah. So what we have here is like the transaction what I've built. So I have for both of the plants I'm getting uh, the MMBB uh, same like uh, with RPA. Then I'm executing the purchase order. Of course, here you don't have this manual wait where you wait for the human to approve. Of course, you could insert here the manual uh, approval through the RPA board with just the manual activity. Um, but I want to show exactly this difference. Yeah? So let's see how the same process can now run with headless, with APIs, with MM21N. Uh, then we release the code 
and do the execution and then download also the PDF and so on. So let's execute it from uh, Postman. I've just created this. And what we will do, we will hit it. And now in SAP, it will basically do the same what the RPA bot has done, but completely headless. And you don't need to reserve a machine for it. You know, it's super powerful. We see our last order was 14. This is 15. And this has been released. So it created, it looked in the inventory. This was the content available. A new purchase order was created. This purchase order by default is blocked. Uh, so you see it need to be released. So it got the release code and it has released it and further processed it. Uh, it took round about eight seconds, which is super fast now compared to the operational resources involved with RPA, with APIs, it headless. Uh, it's much, much faster than you would expect. Again, let's pause here for a second. Um, I want to make sure that we understand this inventory. We have seen two different flavors. First was already super beneficial with the UI automation with RPA. And now second was the even further improvement using APIs and connectivity to automate basically the same process, um, but with the operational efficiency um, with any point. So any questions on this? Yeah, I mean, so I'll go in reverse direction, okay? So can okay. RPA bots be triggered from studio? Yes, RPA bots can be triggered from studio. Um, and the way it works is every bot you publish in Exchange, which you can do using the RPA manager, once your automation is completed, you can say, okay, I want to not schedule the bot on defined uh, timeline. I want to trigger it from externally. The moment you define this invocable action in RPA Manager, it will publish the bot in your um, in your AnyPoint Exchange uh, platform. And from AnyPoint Exchange, you can download this REST API connector into your Mule Flow and execute the RPA bot from your Mule Flow. So yes, it is possible directly from Studio. Excellent. Okay, so now uh, there was a question on API action, right? So the, uh, now they're saying, okay, we see only REST action. Do we have SOAP action also there? Where do you mean? In any point or? Okay, so it was oh, you there mean in, in RPA, okay. RPA, RPA, RPA. right? Yeah. Yes, so it is only REST action, is, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we can further explore. I've not explored it, but I, I believe it's only REST action. Service check, what is this? Let's bring it in. So let's bring this service check. What is this service check? Oh, it's just a TCP echo. Okay, so yes, it is just REST call. And that's also the reason, you know, why we are providing a limited capacity of any point as part of the automation package. So you can compose it and let it be a REST call. If you want to build it, make it more sustainable by providing yeah, the capabilities through the REST which is even faster but yes so it's only rest from uh, rpa okay so the next question is from this flow can we pass the output parameter to the next flow um you mean rpa flow yeah that's what the yes. bpmn diagram that's i think the flow they're talking about yes so yeah, correct me if i'm wrong promote limited automate limited Please yes, me so, yeah. mm -hmm. No, no, this is correct. So yeah. this is um, a process. If you have two of these flows, what you have always is like you can define activity parameters. So there are different uh, types of activity parameters you can define and you can use them as input and output. And you can use them to exchange parameters between the RPA board. How would you do it? The easiest way of course, you can call the RPA bot from a RPA bot and build the whole technical aspects, but I suggest always keep it less complex. Yeah? So you have Composer, it's part of the automation topic. So if it is part of the automation topic, and this would be our next demo, let me just confirm this. This is really, let's say approve. Sorry, this multi-factor. Um, and stop me. So what you can do is basically you can say, I want to create a flow from scratch. 
And let's say we have defined our uh, RPA processes. I want to orchestrate only RPA. And so I can say, this is my RPA environment. Let's go here. I want to wait for a trigger to be completed successfully. So this should be like my OMS, we have it. And uh, let's select this one. And I want to go for failed or successful execution. And now what you can do is you can say, okay, I would like to use again a RPA bot. And now I have to, you know, just try it out. There are so many processes. If I can take, let's say, the, the seems to be output parameters. So here you have use in this flow, select additional fields. So here you can see you have parameters. You can expose them into Composer. Yeah, these are all input parameters and there will be result as well. So I think, yeah. Here you can map these input parameters with output parameters from the previous flow. You can see here triggering is providing me different parameters, the default ones. Yeah, but if I would have defined there, so you can pass the parameters from one flow to the other. And the best way to do it is really in Composer. There are alternative ways you can use to call a bot here and yeah. Easiest way is in Composer and I would suggest let's do it in Composer. So yes, it's possible. Okay, so we have one more question. So what about each action within single BPN diagram? Can we accept input and output parameters? Yes, this is also possible. So between these actions, what you can do is, and let me open another one. We had this HLS example. In the HLS example, what I did, you can work with variables as well. So there are different uh, ways this, uh, which can provide a solution. So what I did here is like, I have defined few parameters like total number of patients and so on, type of files and so on. So what I'm doing here is I'm reading an email, which is providing me as an attachment, a file. I'm opening an application and then I'm deciding what is the type of the file. Yeah? So here you can see in the read email, I am using a parameter which I have inserted here. Let me see. So it's the download pass and type of attachment. And this type of attachment I am reusing here to decide in which direction the flow should be processing. And I can continue to use these parameters as well here in each of these activities. So between the activities you can pass, you can decide the different routes uh, based on the parameter values to process different uh, yeah, passes. So yes, it is possible. Thank you, Amit. Yeah, we can process. Okay, awesome. So we have not much time left so we have also a last demo and i think we have enough time to process it it's a simple one but i want to take this possibility to show it to you it's about composer only we have this simple uh, process where i will be integrating service now with salesforce and slack and the way it will be going is service now is creating incident so i will create an incident in service now the moment the incident is created, I will create the same in Salesforce as a case and then message both ID in Slack. So let's do it. This is the way it will be working. And let's go in. And I just realized my service now. Hopefully it is available. Uh, interestingly, let's see. This should be my service now environment. I can also in parallel go into my Salesforce and open here my Slack service now. No, I want to sign in. So let's do that. Hopefully, this is done. Uh, a long password is always a bit difficult, but let's see. You know, the worst case scenario would be like it is sleeping, hibernating, so it need to be waked up. But I think I use it in this week, so it shouldn't be sleeping. My instance is start building. No. 
sorry okay did not log me in why it did not log me in let me quickly do it again okay now i don't think this is has to do something with me otherwise it's not there let me check if i can use this instant which was created yeah it seems to be there so we are lucky I don't, the page is not working now i'm in service now perfect okay so what we will be doing is we will be going into incident management, creating a new incident. This should, of course, create a case creation or trigger a case creation in Salesforce Service Cloud, which at the end will enter here a message for us. Yeah? So let's go here and into the cases module. So we see the last case which was created is 5306 this was the title so now what we will be doing is we create a new oops where is my composer it's not launched so let's launch composer as well and here we can say we want to have composer like this third okay Okay, so now what I will be doing is I will be creating a flow from scratch. And this flow will be using the first trigger, which is an incident. So I want a flow to be triggered by any incident creation in ServiceNow. So I can say this is my system event. ServiceNow is the trigger. I think demo connection was the right one. And here I can say on new and updated record, the table, I can simply use the incident table. So it's fetching the data. So incident. And let's not configure further in respect of time. So let's continue. The next thing what I want, I, you know, here I could filter out fields and so on. But the next thing what I can now do is I want to use this information, which is coming from the incident creation through a trigger. I want to use it into my Salesforce SDO environment and create or update a new record based on the cases and here i want to match it means if the service now id exists in the external id field in uh, in salesforce it should not create so i can say if the sys id which you have in service now for the record if this exists in salesforce then don't create just update it and the fields which you should be updating is in our case subject only for now and the subject should be having the short description from service now this is the title and once this is done do the next event which is the slack message into a defined channel so post a message to a channel this channel is service request so we can see it here this is the channel service request and now what i can say is um, i can go into custom and say new new tickets created in service now with id and i can map the id directly so let's say it was sys id like this and salesforce case with id and i can say id like salesforce id and that would be it and if i want i can also provide here the bot name uh, let's say this is Amir, and if I wanted, I can also share the icon and so on. But uh, let's save it now, and let's say this is the meetup demo. Save it and just kickstart the execution. I'm sorry, I'm running out of time, um, but I think we can still manage. 
to quickly go through it. So short description would be meet up 15th December 2022, and that would be it. Shoot. So now Composer is watching. Again, Composer is listening for this trigger to happen. The moment it will happen, it will directly process the rest of the flow. So you will see it will happen very soon. So service now will execute the trigger. And you see it is processing. So what will happen here is it will create a new case, meet up in just one field. Yeah, so I did not further map other fields, but this is how simple you can do it. And in Slack, you see there is a new message created with exactly what I have written in my composer task. Um, and this is super powerful because this was just a simple composer scenario. But what you can do, and we have seen it before, you can always go with like, I want to call an RPA bot here. Um, or even further, instead of calling an RPA bot, you can say, these are my APIs from any point which I've published somewhere. And I want to use this accounts APIs, the shared APIs from accounts. I want to request get the accounts and you will see it will get the data, this mocked data which we have and provide a list at the end. So I can just expand, uh, collapse it. And after this, I can say, okay, now instead when I receive here account information, I want to use a for each block where I get the list of these objects. I don't know why it lost connection. Maybe my trial is expired from any point. However, I use this list object and I use it to process, let's say, RPA bots. It's also a good um, scenario where you say, okay, I receive a data set from any point in terms of whatever, and then you can use this data set and further process it by using the input fields which you have in your RPA bot and map the values you have from this any point here, this ID name to the fields which you expect in RPA uh, to be processed. So this is how you would basically be building your flow directly in Composer to expose all the capabilities MuleSoft Automation is providing. You have RPA, you have any point, you have the out of the box con uh, connectivity from Composer. And this makes it super, super relevant um, in today's world to scale automation. Yeah. And with that, I want to quickly summarize uh, what we have seen, uh, or let's do a quick uh, round of, uh, if there are any questions, check, and then we continue. No questions, we are clean. Okay, sorry for the, you know, this delay. But let's quickly also walk through the use cases. I think we have seen this chatbot use cases. You will get this um, deck anyway. Um, patients admission is also a use case and you, you will find for each of those use cases, you will find a video. So there are videos available which you can watch and the inventory uh, use case, which you will just see now is the one we have seen with Martin he invested a couple of time and we have improved it with RPA. So now let's wrap it, wrap, wrap it up. Um, in terms of automation, I understand completely everyone from the Mules of community uh, that we have this fancy new solution with RPA available, but make it more efficient for your customers and for your organization. Think about the API first mindset and use it to automate as well. Yeah? So the moment you start thinking about it, you will see, okay, you have APIs available already in your AnyPoint platform, which you are exposing and reusing anyway. Um, you may have bots also, which you are building with uh, RPA. So use these capabilities together in the same manner and loop to create your automation, where Composer is the place to orchestrate automation, um, to have one single uh, glass or one single uh, platform where all your automation will happen and it will completely decrease the technical debt if you use it in this manner where any point assets are reused in Composer, where RPA assets are reused in Composer and you have direct connectivity in Composer to automate repetitive work and reuse in the flavor you want and really automate and uh, anything, empower everyone and deliver success now. So this is where I believe in the automation market, MuleSoft has a unique uh, value proposition um, with this solution. 
So with that, with that, what would be next? If you are more interested, you want to try it out, there are composer resources available on the Trailblazer community, a uh, few uh, yeah, blogs and trailheads, uh, I'm linking to it as well as training. So feel free to consume uh, these and further uh, upskill yourself. Same for RPA resources. Uh, you guys are already uh, MuleSoft experts, uh, AnyPoint experts, so I have not linked any AnyPoint uh, course here, but for RPA and uh, MuleSoft Composer, you will find the trailhead and trainings available here. So now we are already at the end. And again, sorry, we have only two minutes left. Um, should we go open up for a question or should we go directly into the trivia quiz? Ashish? Uh, there are no questions, Ami, so we can go ahead. Perfect. So let's go into the quiz. And in order to execute the quiz, let's